Mike, talk about what you trade. Yeah, and we're, since we're broadcasting it, make sure you guys just speak right into that microphone, bring it close to you. My name is Mike Kimmelman. I've been trading for about 12 years professionally, a long time before that, semi-professionally. Uh, I trade mostly U.S. equities and options. Uh, I'm an agnostic, which means I believe in nothing, but I'm willing to try anything. Uh, I don't believe there's any holy grail out there as far as indicators or methodology. So what I essentially try to do is line up as many ducks as I can that are in my favor at one time. So I'll look at fundamentals, I'll look at monetary, I'll look at technicals, psychology, sentiment, uh, and on the rare occasion where you get all those lined up in your favor, uh, I think you have to press your bet pretty big. And it's sort of a poker, an a poker analogy, but once you get all these things lined up in your favor, and you rarely do, that's when you actually have to take advantage of it and, and make a, a calculated large bet in a stock. Uh, basically, what I do, though, it doesn't really matter. The most important part is money management, risk management, and discipline. Anything else I tell you is going to be wasted if you don't have those, because even the best indicators and methodology, there's no holy grail. Uh, you know, frankly, if there was, I wouldn't be up here telling you about it. I'd probably be home making money. But it doesn't matter because even the best indicators, they're only right six out of ten times probably. So you have to know that on those other four times, you have to cut your losses fairly quickly, know the situation, and, uh, you know, control your risk. That's really what matters most. Mike, let me ask you a question. So when you talk about everything lining up, my issue when I was beginning and still to this day is <clears throat> you like to think the technical analysis is – a perfect game that when you, when a pattern sets up, mm -hmm. when when you see the doji, it's a perfect trade. But rarely, I mean, I'll see th three of the four things I look at are working. They it look they look it looks like a good trade. Right. Maybe two of the four. It's never I, I never see four of the four. I rarely see the four of the four. So, do you, how do you personally make those decisions? Where maybe a couple of things that you look at looking great, maybe a few aren't. Well, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to buy strong stocks in an uptrending market on a day the market's up that have decent fundamentals. Uh, technicals are, are far from perfect. I think technicals are a bit of an equalizer for the small investor. I think the hedgies, uh, and, you know, the buy side, sell side guys that have a lot more information, they know before you do about a company's fundamentals. They're talking to the CEO, they're checking with vendors, they have a better idea about fundamentals. Technicals lead fundamentals nine out of ten times. So you can use these technicals to sort of equal the game um, but again, there's you know, plenty of breakouts fail. There's a lot of smart people in this game. So we're, you know, cup and handle breakouts used to work seven out of ten times. IBD additions, you know, little games like those used to work. There's a lot more smart people now that are fading these moves or understand, you know, quants running programs to understand what's going to be in the Investor's Business Daily 100 in tomorrow's paper, what's going to be removed. So these moves where you used to be able to just buy them day one, you can't buy them anymore because the people that bought them bought them yesterday, and they're fading the move now. So the moves are a lot more muted. Uh, technicals are just, it's just an indicator. And an indicator means it indicates the likelihood of something, but it's by no means a rule or a law, and you have to take a you know, view of everything that's out there and, and correlate it together and, and try to line up when you have the reward favors your situation versus the risk and, again, cut your losses and try to let your winners run.